Excuse me, little dog. Hi, guys. Well, I don't know what happened to our beautiful fall day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. There are bugs in a jar farm on this. Well, what's beautiful? It is a Saturday afternoon, October 2nd, 2022, and I'm waiting for some hip campers to show up. So uh, I'm sure if I get into this rant, that'll bring them on along finally. Uh, so anyway, just going through the mainstream media here as I'm waiting to be a campground host, deciding uh, <laughs> oh, the options. The options. Do I uh, have some fun or play it serious? How about this one? Uh, you go Bill Gates. Bill Gates, echoing Collapse Chronicles, says telling people to stop eating meat and buying houses will never solve climate change. Yes, climate change will never be solved by asking or expecting others to live greener lifestyles, according to Bill Gates and Sam Mitchell. Yes, speaking uh, to Bloomberg, I guess, yesterday, Gates said expectations that people were going to, quote, utterly change their lifestyle because of concerns about climate were unrealistic. <laughs> Do you think so, Bill? Uh, I guess I could go into this broken record rant about this article that has nothing to do with climate change and everything to do with humans. 12,000-year-old remains of elephant relative found in Chile. Hmm. These 12,000-year-old remains are from an extinct relative of the modern elephant. Huh. Gopfotheres roamed southern Chile thousands of years ago. The animals weighed almost four and a half tons and could reach almost 10 feet tall. Scientists hypothesized they might, they might have been the target of group Hunts. Huh. Quote, the hypothesis we're working on is that this is about hunting, hunting events. We think this because the Gomphothere is a very large animal and dangerous, and it probably required several people to hunt. Close quote. Yes. The discovery could also allow scientists to learn about the wider human impact on the region. This, of course, is the overkill hypothesis uh, they're talking about that the defenders of the myth of the noble savage are not going to admit that humans wiped out all of these megafauna in South America as well as North America. Uh, this climate change hypothesis, throw it out the window. They were doing the same thing in what's Florida, uh, Latin America. Uh, anyway, what does Humpty Dumpty have to say about this? You know, I always like to see if this fellow Humpty Dumpty had left a comment. <clears throat> I think, you know, they say, what do you think, Humpty Dumpty? I think a lot of human-centric overkill deniers will claim that climate change killed these animals, and it had nothing to do with humans because Obviously, any human who lived in the Western Hemisphere before 1492 were noble savages who lived in balance 
in harmony with the planet, living sustainable lives for thousands of years. When will this myth finally be put to rest? But as long as we're down there in South America, obviously the big story out of South America is the election which is going on today. And uh, it looks like the latest polls say De Silva is going to win and uh, Bozo Nero is out. And we will, uh, so a lot of these, you know, these little lefties thinking this means the Amazon rainforest will be saved. Yes, <clears throat> but goodbye and good riddance to Bozo Nero. But uh, behind the scenes of that story, we have this story, which did not show up on Manga Bet. Well, that's right. This will probably be the lead story on Manga Bay next week, now that we're into October. <clears throat> Worst Brazil forest fires in a decade, yet election silence. Yes, September has now come and gone, marking another painful milestone for the world's largest rainforest. It is the worst month for fire in the Amazon in over a decade. Satellite sensors detected over 42,000 fires. 42,000 fires in the last 30 days, according to Brazil's own National Space Institute. This is the first time since 2010 that fires in the Amazon surpassed 40 thousand in a single month. 2010, was that, uh, was Lula president of Brazil in 2010? Uh, well, guess who was in office the last time? 40,000 fires were reported in one month in the Amazon. That would be, hmm, there you go. The first time since Lula was in office that the Amazon surpassed 40,000 fires in a single month. This September was two and a half times worse than last September. Coming at the peak of the dry season, it is usually the worst month, not only for fire, but also for deforestation in general. The official data for forest loss only goes through September 23rd so far, yet, you know, with seven days still left to tally, it is already 14% more devastating than September of 2021. In just those three weeks, the Amazon lost 434 square miles, an area larger than New York City. The surge in forest fire occurs amid a polarizing presidential campaign. Far-right President Jair Bozo Nero is seeking a second four-year term against lefty Luis Ignacio Lula da Silva, who ruled Brazil between 2003 and 2010, you know, the last time there were 40,000 fires in one month, and leads in the polls. Oh, the first round of the election is on Sunday. It's tomorrow. Why did I think it was today? But anyway, you can see. Uh, so I guess we can move from the president overseeing 42,000 fires in a month to the Save the Amazon president who only saw 40,000 fires in a month when he was at the head. Yes. <clears throat> Despite 
the smoke clogging the air of entire Amazon cities, state elections have largely ignored environmental issues. Besides the president, Brazilians will also elect governors and state and national parliaments. So, you know, Manga Bay was talking about this angle yesterday, that even if the guy who oversaw 40,000 fires in one month in the Amazon beats the guy who oversaw 42,000 fires in one month in the Amazon. Uh, you know, Bozo Nero's cronies will still sweep all of the governorships and all of that in the actual Amazon. Uh, which, you know, where everybody in the Amazon, with the possible exception of a few noble savages, uh, are, you know, 100 uh, percent fans of Bozo Nero. Uh, and Pará State, the worst state for both deforestation and fire, the subject of deforestation was barely touched on during a TV debate among gubernatorial candidates uh, held Tuesday. Over an hour and a half, only one candidate even mentioned the steep increase in deforestation. Uh, Globo, Brazil's leading television network, did not even select deforestation or fires as one of eight debate topics, you know, among Amazon state governor candidates. They eight topics concerning the Amazon deforestation nowhere mentioned in the in, you know uh, the moderator. Never thought of it. <clears throat> hmm. Protecting the Amazon rainforest is not a high priority for the population after years of corona panic and a deteriorating economy. Paolo Barreto, a researcher with the nonprofit Amazon Institute of People and the Environment, told the Associated Press, quote, but the fact that journalists do not ask is an even bigger problem. On the other hand, there are growing economic opportunities related to conservation, close quote. Deforestation can lead to more poverty, he said. Mm, do you think so? Fire in the Amazon is almost always deliberately set to improve cattle pasture or burn recently felled trees once they are dry. Often the fires burn out of control and reach pristine forest areas. Study of, studies have shown that deforestation rates peak in election years and 2022 has been particularly intense because of Bozo Nero's anti-environmental rhetoric, according to analysts, said Barreto, quote, with a chance of changing the government to one that promises more rigor. You know, who, you know the guy who promises to reduce the number of wildfires in one month from 42,000 to 40,000. That guy, okay? Just so you understand what we're talking about, what the definition of more rigor, more rigor, reduce the fires from 42,000 to 40,000 and say, look at the improvement. Anyway, it seems that deforesters are taking advantage of the possibility that the party's over. Yes. Since Bozo Nero took office in 2019, deforestation has been on the rise 
as his administration has defanged, defanged, I love that, environmental authorities and backed measures to loosen, to loosen land protections and bolding, boldening environmental offenders, the far-right leader has repeatedly denied that fire is even increasing despite official data from his own government. On Thursday night, during the final presidential debate before the vote, Bozo Nero said that forest fires occur periodically in the Amazon, dismissing the criticism as a, quote, war of narratives, close quote, and said that Brazil, quote, is an example to the world, close quote, on conservation. Well, well, uh, Brazil certainly is an example to the world on conservation. There you go. That's exactly, uh, <laughs> I, I, can, I cannot think of a better example uh, to the world on what is going on, uh, on con with conservation on this planet. It, it, is, it, it is the poster child, along with Haiti and Nigeria, uh, Brazil, if you want to see everything that is wrong with conservation on the planet, Brazil is a prime example to the world of why the world is doomed. Uh, <clears throat> that was an answer to Simone Tibet, a senator who is close to agribusiness leaders and considered a moderate in the race. And one of the few moments free of personal insults, she criticized Bozo Nero's environmental record in a segment related to climate change. So understand that this is a senator who is close to agribusiness. Uh, talking to Bozo Nero, quote, your administration is the one that has set biomes, forests, and my Pantanal wetlands on fire. Ah, uh, that sounds vaguely obscene. Setting this woman's Pantanal wetlands on fire. Your administration favored miners and loggers and protected them, she said. You, in this regard, were the worst president in Brazil's history. During his campaign, De Silva promised to restore law enforcement and gain support from indigenous environmental leaders such as former environment minister, environment minister Marina Silva. Uh, she, meaning Marina Silva, as we've talked about, had broken publicly with the former president over his push to build hydroelectric dams and other development initiatives in the Amazon and announcing her support during a meeting with De Silva a few weeks ago, <clears throat> Marina Silva called Bozo Nero a threat to Brazil's democracy. She said the country is facing a critical moment on issues ranging from the environment to the economy. Um, let's see. And we have one comment on this story. One comment. Who do you think the one comment on the planet is by if your guess is Humpty Dumpty? Humpty Dumpty, what do you think? The fact that I am the first and so far the only person on a planet of 8 billion people to comment on this story 
is comment enough about the future of the Amazon fire forest. So let's all wish the Save the Planet former president Da Silva to come back in power so we can see some more hydroelectric dams being built in the Amazon to save the planet. And let's get those fires down from 42,000 down to 40,000 in one month to save the planet. Anyway, uh, I guess I've got to wrap this up and go figure out where my campers are. They're going to get here after dark. Ugh. Bye, guys.